Hello students. In this video, we are going to understand about tuned collector oscillator. We have learned that there are different types of oscillators uh, used for um, producing oscillations. And then there are a set of tuned circuit oscillators, uh, which are also known as LC oscillators or resonant circuit oscillators or tank circuit oscillators. Among that, very one of the important oscillator is tuned collector oscillator. First, we shall understand that. Okay, so here the figure of a tuned collector oscillator is given. And you, when you look at the first, you may feel that it is very complex circuit, but it is a very basic uh, and an easy circuit because it is basically an amplifier circuit with some modifications. Okay. So this is the transistor which you give. So this is N, P, N transistor, which is a emitter and this is base and this is collector. And uh, you can see that uh, you norm as you normally give voltage divided biasing, there are two resistors R1 and R2 connected for giving the biasing and which is connected to a plus VCC voltage. Okay. Then you have an em from the emitter, you have the resistance RE, which is again given for um, stabilization or AC basically uh, biasing okay then additionally you have a capacitor CE which is actually part of a an amplifier but then you may not be very much familiar so you have a circuit uh, capacitor here CE we call this capacitor as a bypass capacitor emitter bypass capacitor why because basically you know that RE is set for giving the proper stabilized stabilization of proper, proper biasing. So what happens is that when you when the amplification work out, you get larger uh, collector current or uh, larger emitter current. So it, what happens is that the AC due to the amplification of the AC signal, you are going to get a very high resistance over the R, a very high voltage over the RE. But then we actually use RE for DC voltage setup, and because for biasing, we require DC voltages, right? So B, the, the DC voltage across the resistance is very, very much required or very much need for stabilization. But the um, amplified AC voltage, uh, which is produced as a result of the amplification, a part of that will also get actually uh, produces a lot across the or voltage across the resistance RA. So that is actually going to destabilize the circuit or uh, you can say that uh, that is actually ham will hamper the um, uh, biasing of the circuit. So in order to bypass the AC, which voltage which is passing through the resistance, you give in parallel a capacitor. So what happens is that the AC current will get bypassed through the capacitor and get grounded. So you will get DC uh, resistance or DC voltage across this resistance. So that is why we keep a bypass capacitor always along with it in the amplifier circuit parallel to RE. Then uh, as in the case of an amplifier, you, you normally have a supply here. But in the instead of that, we don't have the supply voltage. You know that oscillator works without an input signal. So uh, here a capacitor is there. That means it is actually called as coupling capacitor. So that will actually uh, improves the AC signal which is giving, which is given to the base of the transistor. So this is uh, it is used for actually uh, AC signal amplification. So what happens is uh, the input AC, which is actually going passing through the circuit, that will be uh, easily passing through the capacitor. And uh, it is for the easily AC flow of this AC, we actually use this coupling capacitor. Now, normally in the case of an amplifier, you have seen that uh, this part is directly connected to the base. It is a common emitter amplifier configuration. So you give directly to the base. But instead of that, in the tuned collector oscillator, uh, this base, this base, you can see that is actually connected to a coil L2. And that is again connected to the input side. Okay. So instead of directly giving the supply, you have a additional circuit here. Okay. Which is actually constituting an L2, the secondary coil of a transformer. Then you can see that the collector collector part, it is a connected to a tank circuit. You know that tank circuit is a combination of L and C connected in parallel. So 
but you don't have a resistance RC, which normally you have in the case of an amplifier. Instead of that RC, you have an LC tank oscillator. Okay, so this LC tank oscillator, uh, it is then actually this L1 is actually mutually coupled to L2 uh, uh, coil, and then that is actually taken to the base of the transistor. So this is actually the circuit of a tuned collector oscillator. Now we shall see actually what is happening or how the feedback system work um, and how basically the amplification or oscillations are produced. Uh, now we can see that you there will be some input in the initially and that input will be given to the base and it will be amplified out okay and then this amplified output signal you can say that will be basically phase reversed now you can see what I have what you can see is uh, see here you have a capacitor now you know you think about the working of a tank circuit you know that when capacitor is charged to a particular voltage uh, then after that the electric field over the capacitor will be changed to the inductance coil or handed over to the inductance coil so that will set a magnetic field so then oscillations will be produced within the LC circuit now that voltage whatever is developed in the L1 that will be mutually coupled to the L2 so depending upon the winding you have learned that V1 V2 is equal to N1 by N2 so depending upon the, upon the number of turns in the secondary coin uh, secondary winding of the transformer uh, in uh, EMF will be induced in the L2 okay so uh, uh, so that is how actually L2 works but now one thing what you have to very much uh, understand is that uh, transformer is a phase shifting device so that means whatever voltage you give to the input of this transformer primary that will actually that voltage will so whatever if you give a voltage V to the primary of the transformer and the, the current passing through the uh, winding that will be at a phase difference of 90 degree okay and that will again so that in uh, that current change which actually induces uh, induces um, uh, magnetic magnetic field magnetic flux change so the current and the magnetic flux will be in phase but then that uh, current again when it induces emf that will that current and the induced emf will be again at a phase difference of 90 degree and that induced emf that EMF is actually will induce an EMF in the L2. So that both the voltages at L1 and L2 will be in phase. But then whatever you give as the input to the primary, that input voltage and the induced EMF in the L1 will be at 180 degree phase difference. So normally we call the transformer as a phase shifting device. So what you can understand from this is that you the input of the tank circuit and the output produced by the or input to the uh, L1 and the output uh, to the out output of the feedback circuit. So the, actually this part constitute the feedback. This is the tank circuit and this part constitute the feedback circuit. So basically the input which is given or you can say that the, the whatever voltage is fed to this tank circuit that will be 180 degree and that voltage and the voltage appearing across, across the L2 will be 180 degree out of phase and that is what is actually given to the base of the transistor. So what you have to finally keep in mind is that the because of the transformer action the voltage which is given to the feedback circuit will be 180 degree out of phase uh, with respect to the voltage which is actually out uh, getting out of the feedback network so input of the feedback network and output of the feedback network that is the output which is appearing here will be 180 degree out of phase okay so that is happening actually within this particular circuitry uh, so that was one of the very important uh, or um, requirement as per the barkhausen criterion for sustained oscillation so this is what is happening. So this feedback voltage is, or, uh, is given to the base of the transistor. Uh, or I can say that the feedback voltage is connected between the base and the, it is connected between the one is base and the other end is actually given to the 
emitter. So feedback voltage is given across the base and the emitter of a transistor. Okay, uh, so that is uh, how you get an output. With the input signal, you get an output and this a part of the output voltage will be fed back to the input side and that will be 180 degree out of phase. Now we can think about the other parameters that the feedback fraction beta of this feedback network can be written as m by l and this m is actually in the mutual inductance between the primary and the secondary windings of the transformer so this is actually mutual inductance and mutual inductance value is actually equal to k times root of l1 into l2 Okay, so L1 is here and S is L2. So mutual inductance M is K times root of L1 into L2 and L2, L K is actually the coefficient of coupling. So this is called as the coefficient of coupling. Okay, so this uh, feedback fraction beta is actually it is mutual inductance M divided by the L1. So this is as per your text, but this L is actually L1 as per the figure. M divided by L1. That is the uh, feedback fraction. Now uh, you have to understand the frequency and you have already learned in the tank circuit the frequency produced or oscillations are basically produced by the tank circuit. So tank circuit actually determines the frequency of the oscillations produced and that is actually equal to 1 by 2 pi into square root of LC and that L is actually here is L1. Okay, also whatever inductance which you use in the primary, which you use in the primary winding that can be used here. So that determines the um, frequency of the um, oscillations produced by a tuned collector oscillator. And we call it as a tuned collector because we give that keep the tank circuit at the collector side. Okay, so um, this is how and you can actually tune the collector part because we, we tune the capacitor and the L1 value. Uh, to produce the oscillations frequency of oscillation according to our desired uh, level or desired frequency you can set by tuning this values. So this is how uh, tuned collector oscillator works. Thank you.